ones and the squash soup. It's like restaurant quality is going to be fantastic. That's next week. This week, we are making Tonga toast. Plus, I'm going to explain what Tonga toast really is, the secret of Tonga toast, which is called mozzarella and carrozza, if you're Italian, except it has... Um, I take a minute. It's a different... Well, I'll get to that in a minute. So I think we have everybody here. Welcome Saturday night, <clears throat> Copycat Kitchen. Nice to see everyone. This has become a little bit of a tradition for us. And uh, Joshua has decided to make a drink this evening. And we are going to make, what are you making tonight, Josh? We are making what is called the Back Scratcher from Tambu Lounge over at Ohana. Or not Ohana, sorry. Over at uh, Disney's Polynesian Resort. So... It's right, nice. that Tambo Lounge is right next to Ohana if you've never been there. Um, so, and it's a pretty good drink. It's it's very, very easy to make, and it goes down very easy as well. So, but, yeah. We, are ready we ready? To, Everybody else ready? ready? You guys ready to uh, make a drink? All right. All right, let's do this. So, um, for tonight, the ingredients for this back scratcher is really simple. Um, you just need a white rum i've got my value bottle of white rum um you should have gotten like a myers dark rum and then um pog juice which uh this is actually it's actually just sweet tea but no it's, it's actually pog juice um i drank all the sweet tea that i filled it up so i pre-mix mine it's just a little bit easier to do that way especially whenever you're going to make a lot of these um rather than having to pour each one individually so your pog juice should be um, guava, orange juice, and uh, papaya, passion fruit. Sorry, passion fruit. All of which you can find at Walmart. Um, if you didn't see it or you had trouble finding it, it was probably in like the more like ethnic section that has a bunch of different things. So um, I just went and did three parts equal of each into this gallon jug, and we've already been having a few. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to make everything into my shaker cup, which is uh, where I always go. So um, for your drink, for your juice, your pog juice, if you didn't mix it, it's going to be a, an ounce and a half of each, your orange juice, guava, and passion fruit, or four and a half ounces total. So I think my measuring cup is clean, so I'm just going to measure it right in here. Nice and simple. After that, we're going to start measuring off the good stuff, which is our uh, white rum. And uh, you're going to do an ounce. Or if you're like me, I do about an ounce and a quarter. A little extra. Nothing wrong with that. And lastly, for this, um, at least for our drink, we're going to do an ounce of Myers dark rum. Now, something that I neglected to mention because for me, I don't really I don't really like it, but another thing that you could be using tonight is Jack Daniels um, or like a Gosling 151, something that's pretty heavy, uh, pretty strong and uh, use that as a floater. I'm not going to do that tonight, but once you put everything into your mixing cup, you're going to get some ice. And then we're going to shake it up. And I'm going to mute my. All right. So once we have that all shaken up, you can, uh, you can really serve this in any glass that you want. Uh, I think over at Tambu Lounge, they do tend to serve them in taller glasses, something closer to a hurricane. Um, but I'm just going to use like a highball glass and just pour that right into there. And, uh, I guess I am missing a back scratcher. I don't have a back scratcher. So, um, traditionally you would, you'd have this with a back scratcher. You could take home as a souvenir, which is really nice, but, uh, this is it. I mean, it's a super simple drink to make. Uh, it tastes fantastic. It's very smooth. It's light, fruity, tropical-y. So, uh, you know. Have fun with it. And uh, 
Cheers to everybody else out there. Cheers. The back scratcher, nice. Good. People Should are cooking moving. along tonight, or at least they're drinking along. Cooking along, giving us a nice cup. Yeah, officially. Hey, Adam, nice. I have a question to start off with. Sure. I brought my sourdough when it was already sliced at a half inch thick. Am I going to be okay? Well, yes and no. I'm going to show you another technique. Okay. okay. That'll be fine. We'll we'll make it happen. Like they say, my first restaurant job. Make it happen. That's what the guy would say. Make it happen. I hate that expression, but we're going to make it happen. So here we are, Tom to toe. So I looked at this recipe and I was looking at it and shopping for ingredients and checking it out. And then I realized like about an hour ago, this is mozzarella and carrozza. They just repurposed it. Mozzarella and carrozza, for those that don't know, is fried bread, the same exact coating and everything. But instead of stuffing it with sweet, it's stuffed with mozzarella cheese and tomato. And you're making a little fried sandwich. And I've been selling it as appetizers in restaurants for years, but I just didn't put it together because I'm, you know, losing my mind. But I'm going to show you how to make that, too, because it's the same thing. So... You're going to learn how to make tonga toast, and I'm going to make a mozzarella and carrozza for you also, because the method is exactly the same. I'm also going to show you, because of when I, weighed, I made mozzarella and carrozza, in order to get a one and a half inch thick piece of bread, okay, you need to get bread that hasn't been sliced. So that is the challenge for this recipe. But if you were not able to get bread that was not sliced, no sweat. I'm going to show you my other method when I was making mozzarella and carrozza. Now, before I get into this, and this is going to go pretty quick tonight, so I want to give you all a couple little point pointers. Plus, I'll show you the mozzarella and carrozza with the tonga toast. Um, a lot of people like to eat bacon with this. So, I'm just going to show you the easiest way to make bacon. Very simply, piece of parchment paper. I never make bacon on top of the stove. I always make it in the oven. And the reason for that is even heat. So a piece of parchment, best if you cover it all. And when you put your bacon and make sure it's not touching, okay? And we can make a maple bacon or a honey bacon or anything like that. Um, so, um, okay. Okay. So I'm just going to put in the bacon. I just wanted to show you how I make bacon. And I make bacon like this when I'm making bacon for hundreds of people. I make them on big sheet trays because it's the best way to make bacon because it lays out flat. You really don't want to ever make bacon on the top of the stove. Okay. We're going to make a strawberry compote, which is a topping for tonga toast. We're going to make that first. Um, and it's really simple, and I'll show you exactly what it is. So you get your strawberries, and one thing people don't realize is, like, if the food is rotten, just because you cook it doesn't make it taste better. So if your strawberry is soft and mushy, throw it in the garbage. Cooking, it's not going to help. All you're going to do is take off the top of the strawberry like this, and cut it like that. If the fruit is sweet, it helps. Now you are adding sugar to it, so adding sugar will make a difference, obviously, because you're gonna get a sweet compote, but if you can get good quality fruit, get that. And here's another little trick. A lot of times they pack berries like this in a container like this. Forget about what you can see on the top. Flip it over and look on the bottom, because a lot of times, the mush is on the bottom. And if you see the mush on the bottom, don't buy it. Raspberries, they're f famous for having a mushy bottom. You don't want mushy bottoms. You want fit, firm bottoms. Like you went to the gym your whole life. Okay, so anyway, you're cutting this like this. And I sit here with Pam, it's like a sensor. It's the best, like I say things like, Sometimes she laughs, sometimes she buries her head in her hands. It's always, it's always a treat. Okay, so anyway, you're going to cut up your strawberries. I just cut off the little stems off the top. They are not edible. 
And then you're going to cut up your berries, and they don't have to be anything fancy. By the way, if you don't know how to sharpen a knife, use a serrated knife, because a serrated knife grabs an item much easier. And if you're teaching a kid how to cook, a little kid, let them use a serrated knife for a lot of things, because it, it grabs the food. And, you know, this serrated knives, like, rarely have to be sharpened, because there's teeth on the knife as compared to another knife, like a non-serrated knife, you have to keep your edge sharp. Serrated knife, you can sharpen the edge of a serrated knife, but not as important as sharpening the edge of a non-serrated knife. Anyway, I'm just cutting these in even pieces, easy peasy. Um, there's a little white on top of this berry. I'll get rid of it. That just means it's not ripe. Okay, and I'm going to keep a couple of these berries um, because I'm going to use them inside my Tonga toast along with my banana when I make that later. Okay, so anyway, there are my berries all cut up. I'm going to put them into my pan. Very simple. This is a compote. Compotes, I like keeping the pieces a little larger because they're going to cook down a little bit. So I don't need to really mush them up. So every compote fruit compote is about the same. So this is one and a half cups of chopped strawberries. This is three tablespoons of sugar, white granulated sugar. Can you use another kind of sugar? Can you use a brown sugar? Can you use a coconut sugar? You can. I just like the flavor profile of just plain old granulated sugar. And <coughs> by the way, Domino sugar in the supermarket is $3.50 for five pounds. Public sugar is $2.42. Buy the public sugar, there's no difference in these sugars. Sorry, Dave, you blew a buck 40, you didn't need to. So, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, okay, so I have my sugar in there. I have my uh, strawberries in there. Now, very important you put in the acid when you're making a berry compote. The acid in a berry compote makes a tremendous difference, okay? And when I'm talking about acid, I'm talking about lemon juice, lime juice. I'm not talking about the little tabs at a Grateful Dead concert, okay? I'm talking about the acid that you would find in a fruit, okay? Just to be clear. Um, let me see if I can find my acid, thank you. So, um, I've been using a lemon uh, slight juice lately. I get a lot out of it much easier for me. And we'll look right in. That's half of um half of a lemon. There it is. Now here's another little thing that I like to do because it adds a little texture and it gives you a little zip little zip of flavor, which is the zest. So you if you don't have a zester, this is um a microplane zester and I'll take the other half of the lemon and I'll just zest. Now, when you zest something, you don't want any of the white, you don't want any of the pith, you're just looking for the skin, because the skin has all the, um, like, the, it has, yeah, it has the flavor, it has the oils, and it makes a difference. So, look what I did, just a little zest, bang it like this, okay, and there it is. Now, there's also lemon extract, um, vanilla extract in this. You're going to wait till the end with the vanilla extract. I find that vanilla extract, for some reason, cooks out. So I don't like to put it in the beginning of the recipe. I know there's a lot of baking with vanilla extract, but when I'm putting in something like this, I like to put it in at the end. Okay? That's just my little thing. This is vanilla extract. Um, we've talked about this before. A vanilla bean one vanilla bean covered with absolute vodka and um that's it so you have vanilla extract and it's and you just smell it it's great it's beautiful and you could drink it you could now make vanilla vodka simple as that take a big old bottle of like a two dollar rock gut like josh bought for his drink and you fill it with uh, you know the vanilla beans and you have vanilla vodka or you have uh I do it with a lemon too. I put lemon slices in there. I wait a month or two. One day we're gonna make a lemon cello together because I love lemon cello. It's a great drink, easy to make. Okay, so my uh, fruit is cooking down. 
Now, one thing about the fruit cooking down is you want to move, you want to keep it moving because what's going to end up happening is the sugar is going to start melting. Okay. Now, here's another little trick. You don't obviously don't need to do it. I'm just giving you a little, little hinty hints. You eat with your eyes. So when you look at something, you get turned on or turned off, depending on what it looks like. So a little trick that you can do with your fruit compost, your strawberry compost or your raspberry compost, is you can add a touch of grenadine. You don't have to. I'm just giving you... I, you know, I don't give all these ingredients here because I don't want you to spend $100 when you don't have to, but if you happen to have a little bit in the house, a little shot of grenadine in there will make it a, a brighter color red. But do you need it? No. But if you have it, it's a cool little thing. I put in about a tablespoon and a half. I would even, I mean, I'm big. I mean, I used to use a lot of red food coloring um, in my food, which is like a very Asian thing. Um, but I don't do it anymore because it freaks people out. Anyway, I'm just going to cook this down. Now, if this gets a little sticky for you, you could always put in a tablespoon of water on top of it. Okay. So that's going to cook down. Um, I want you to now, on your stove, I want you to fill something up where you're going to fry your tongue and toasting because I want you to preheat it, okay? And this is mine i've been preheating it and it's about four inches of vegetable oil so here's the thing with oils okay people like to save oil and recook oil i made plantanos the other day okay plantanos is like a banana i made it just fried a little couple of plantanos for me and my sister Ba boom i ate them i saved the oil the next day I was making something for Pam. What was I making? Shrimp tempura. Simple dish, right? But flavorful, very assertive. Pam's like, what did you fry in that oil? She knew. She could taste the plantanos the next day. And you know what? For the $1.15 oil that I have, throw it away. Let it cool down. Put it in a container. Throw it away. We're not doing enough frying in our lives to save oil. Now, in a restaurant... When you have a big, you know, I fry, I fry in gallons of oil. I clean it out. Well, honestly, I don't clean it out. Somebody else cleans it out. Okay, it gets, it's a big pain in the, in the neck. But you need to clean the oil every day. You strain it out. You clean out the machine with soap and water. You add it again. And you can get a couple of days of oil out of it. Because oil in a restaurant costs about 35 bucks to fill a fryer. Like a big fryer later but you want to get a couple of days out of it. That's why they have different kinds of frying oils like Mel Fry and, and um, all different frying oils that have chemicals in them to keep the oil an extra day. But if you're frying in like in fancy restaurants, I fry in things like duck fat. I fry in things like um, canola oil or other, other kind of oils. Those are very expensive, but they make a difference. They truly make a difference. Anyway, Tonight, you want a very clean, neutral oil. I'm just using vegetable oil, straight vegetable oil. I find no difference between <clears throat> Western oil and store Western oil, store bought oils. Okay. Um, some things, listen, you, you, with food, you learn to pick your battles. You know, like I'll only prime steak because there's a difference between prime and choice. But there's no difference between Western oil and store Publix vegetable oil. So you have to know where to put, pick your battles. There's no difference between Publix granulated sugar and Domino sugar. As a matter of fact, a lot of these massive brands that you see, they, they're, they're doing off-branding for the stores anyway. It's the same product. They just put a different container. Now, is there a difference between Lucky Charms and not-so-Lucky Charms? Well, if you ask my daughter, she'll say yes. She won't eat them. One tastes like cardboard. One tastes like double cardboard. So it depends. You know what I mean? You pick your, pick your battles. That's what I say. It's like being married, you know? You have to know when to fight, and you have to know when to, to run away. 99% of the time, just run away, because you're not going to win anyway. Okay, so 
Okay, so my oil, you're heating it up. You want it at 350 degrees. Now, if you don't have a thermometer, okay, I suggest, I really do, so, oh, here, this is, look at this. It's starting to cook down. Look. Look, the dog sits right under me. I mean, you, did Julia Child have a dog bothering her all the time, Pam? Okay, so anyway, this is co cooking down, cooking down, and it's and the liquid is starting to seep out, and I want it to continue to cook for a couple more minutes until all the fruit is soft, okay? So I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to let it cook a little bit, okay? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in eh, two tablespoons of water. You could also throw an orange juice, but I'm going to put in about a tablespoon or two of water and let it cook down a little bit more. Okay. And there, it's going to continue to boil down a little bit. Okay. Okay. The thermometer, right. Okay. So this is a great tool. If you want to invest like 20 bucks, it's called a candy thermometer. And the difference between a candy thermometer and your regular meat thermometer is that this goes up to 400 degrees, okay? So I could take this and I could put it in my oil and I could temp my oil. So I could tell you my oil, which I want to be at 350 degrees, if with this candy thermometer, I'm going to know where my oil is at. Now, the old trick is you could throw in like a, a piece of bread and you can guess, you could certainly guess. But, you know, the less you guess, the easier it's going to be. And it's called the candy thermometer because if you ever made like things with sugar, sugar has different, there's a hard crack, there's a soft crack, there's a caramel, there's um, balling, firm ball, soft ball. So anyway, but here, I'm getting pretty close to 350 degrees. So I know I need to make it a little hotter. But so this is a good investment, a candy thermometer. Plus, if you ever actually make candy, well, hey. Now you have a candy thermometer. So, but it's not a meat thermometer and it's not meant to be used in the oven. Okay, that's cooking down. The dog's going nuts, he smells the bacon. Let's make the tonga toast. Okay, so if you have a whole piece of bread, okay, what you wanna do is you wanna cut a one and a half inch slice. Okay, so I'm gonna say this is gonna be about one and a half inches. pretty thick. One and a half inches on a piece of bread is pretty thick. Okay, I'm going to cut another one. About one and a half inches thick. Now, there it is. Okay, thick piece of bread. Okay, now I see the people that don't have the thick bread, I'm going to teach them a trick. So what they're going to do is you're going to take your bread you're gonna put two pieces together, okay? You're gonna to cut around the outside and you're gonna make two squares of the bread. I'll, you know what, I'm just gonna show you. So this is if you have thin bread, okay? And this is how I make the mozzarella and carrots. So let's say your bread has been pre-cut, you didn't get, you didn't follow directions and get yourself the hole, you couldn't do it for whatever reason. No problem, put the two pieces together, and all I want you to do is take off some of the crust. Okay. And in the middle of your bread, now you're gonna have these two soft pieces of bread. So what you're gonna do is, I'll show you this way first. Okay, so there's your two pieces of bread. Okay, your outside is gonna go, uh, Save them for croutons, whatever you want to do. And you're going to take your two pieces of bread like this, okay, flat, flatten them out, okay? Then inside of them is going to go whatever you're going to put in the tonga toast, because this is your version of tonga toast, okay? So here, the tonga toast calls for a banana, so... This is going to be, this is just for the people that don't have, so you take your banana, this is, the banana is going to be cut the same for both, but you're going to cut it in half that way, half this way, lay it on there like this, okay? And then you're going to take your other piece of bread 
and you're going to push the sides together with your finger so the bread is going to seal. It's almost like making a ravioli. Okay, push it together. See what I'm doing? The bread will get a little glutinous. That's exactly what you want to do. And this, by the way, is how I make mozzarella and carrozza, is I put mozzarella in here, tomato, and I push it down, and the rest of it's the same. Now, to make your tonga toast, okay, so here's the tonga toast. I'm going to cut carefully again and take off carefully my edges of the, uh, the crust, okay? But you're not going to be pushing this down, so you just want to remove your crust. I love to be able to like remove the crust some, from some people that are crusty and annoying, but I but I can't. And I'm sure people like to remove my crust, but they can't. Okay, so okay, so there it is, a thick piece of bread about an inch and a half thick, with the edges removed. Okay. Now in this method of tonga toast. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a little slit in the side, not all the way through, a pocket. I'm gonna cut a little pocket. Okay. I'm gonna stick my finger in there to make the pocket a little bigger. But can you see what we did? Okay, so we make making a pocket right in the middle of the tongue toast. Everybody see that? Okay. So inside this pocket of the thick tonga toast is going to be the same situation. Cut your banana the long way once and again. Okay. And it's going to get stuck inside of your hole there. Okay. Now, if you have room, can you put a little strawberry or why not? Okay, you, and could you put any, yeah, you can put anything you want. Okay, so anyway, now you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna squeeze the sides of it down. See what I'm doing? And you're gonna be sealing it because the bread becomes like kind of seals it itself. Okay. Yeah, you're making like a little ravioli situation. Okay, Pam's pointing out it's breaking through the bottom. So if that happens, okay, squeeze the bottom together. You can even take another piece of bread if you wanted to and seal it, okay? But you don't want, like here, I have a little bit on the end. I'm gonna make a Band-Aid, see if that works, okay. But you don't want it to break out the bottom. Okay, so here's my two methods. I have the thick method and the thin method. method. Okay, I'm going to make one more. So there's the tonga toast method. Now, what I said before about mozzarella and carrozza, this is mozzarella and carrozza, which is a great dish and like your little bonus today of what you can do. All you're doing is putting a little mozzarella cheese in there and then you could serve it with a pesto or tomato sauce. It makes a really cheap, great appetizer. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a mozzarella stick. So I'm going to make a small one just to show you all what it's like. But yeah, it's just essentially like a mozzarella stick. I like burrata. Burrata is a mozzarella cheese that has a liquid on the inside of it. So it's very soft. So it's perfect for this. So I'm just going to put a little bit there. Cover it up. You know, you could put a tomato in here if you wanted to. Um, but for tonight, I'm just going to kind of do this for you, show you. Like, listen, you know, your relatives drop by, your friends, you're like, what should I make for these people? You're like, I got it. I'll make a mozzarella and carrozza. I used to sell these in restaurants. I used to pick the extra bread and I used to make a pesto and I put a little mozzarella and I get $10 for this on a menu. Okay. So there you go. There's your breads stuffed. Now your oil. You need your oil, okay, at 350 degrees.
Okay. There's my compo cooking down. Now, with your compo, what you want to do with your compo is you want to uh, you want to break it down a little bit. Now, <clears throat> breaking down a compo is easy to do. You can do it with um, one of these. It's called a burr mixer or hand blender. Great kitchen item. Okay, they have all different kind of attachments for these. I don't like any of them. I just like the idea of the hand blender. And they're pretty cheap. You can get them for like 25 bucks or less. Let me just check my bacon. Bacon is working almost ready. And I'm gonna, I wanna show you this because this is a good tool. Like I, I think this is like a good like intermediate tool. And in restaurants, we have these things. They call them motorboats because they're this long, honestly, two or three feet long. And it's the same thing, but you're putting it in a giant pot because a lot of times you don't want to like, you don't want to have to pour something into a blender. It's dangerous. It's a long time. You just stick and that's it. I'll show you what it does. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, I can do it this way. I'm going to unplug this for a second. Yeah, that's okay. I don't, I don't need it. Okay. So I'm going to show you what a burr mixer does. Good investment in a burr mixer. Okay, so here's my uh, strawberries. Now, one thing about a burr mixer, if you're going to use it, Make sure when you're using it, you don't lift it up because it'll start like splattering and it'll be a mess. So you want to keep it low. See? It's splattering anyway. It should be in a deeper, a deeper thing. Yeah, I could, but I'm not going. Okay. See how it's splattering, but it's still because it's such a small amount, and I only want it to break. I don't want to break it up completely. It still did the job, but and the way these work is the bottom part is the motor, and the bot this just disconnects. Then you only have to wash this piece, and this you know just um, goes back in the drawer after you wash it. There. So. That's a burr mixer, stick blender demonstration. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna get ready to fry that mozzarella and carrozza in a moment. The um, Tonga toast, we're gonna to fry it. This is gonna get a full blast to 350 degrees. One, two, three. Hey, Adam. Yes, I'm listening. For those of us that don't have the burr mixer, what would blender. you recommend us using to break up the, the combo? Blender. In a blender. In a blender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that, boom, 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 twice in a blender, you're good. Careful though, you know, when you put sugar, sugar is like your worst kitchen burn. So always be careful with sugar, no matter what it is, because like with a blender, what I suggest you do in the blender, so you put it in the blender, okay? And then you take a kitchen towel, and you cover the top of your blender. Then you put it on slow, boom, 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 and that's it. But this is a good protective, like I, I gotta say like here, I'm gonna show you. I've gotten hurt by blenders more than once in my life because blenders have open tops, okay? And you turn on a liquid in a blender, zzz, the liquid pops up. So what you do is you just put a towel over the top of the blender like this, then you turn it on zzz, and you'll, protect your cell, your face. And, and another thing, I'm not, you know, because tonight I, I, cause it doesn't look good on TV. When I cook, I always wear glasses, always, because stuff splatters up in your eyes all the time. And I tell cooks, like guys that are banging food out on a line, wear glasses because it's gonna really, and they're like, it's a pain in the neck, stuff gets all over it. I'm like, schmuck. The stuff's getting over it because it's protecting your eyes. Do you understand? So keep the glasses on. They make a difference in the kitchen. You know? 
So anyway, that's that. I think my bacon might be ready. I'm going to check that out. Let's check it out. This is good. Oh, by the way, I'm going to cook this down a little bit more. After I blend it, I'll cook it down a little bit more. Oh, yeah, look at that bacon. So shut it off. Bacon's perfect, see? Now, I will say that the bacon fat, like I was talking about throwing fat away, some fats you might want to save, like I'm making chili tomorrow, so I'm going to use that bacon fat to saute my onions because I'm going to pull a lot of flavor out of it, but that's just a little extra suggestion. But And I'm going to leave it on here for a couple minutes to cool down, you know? I'm in no rush. All right. I'm going to bring my uh, liquid up here. Now, the burn that you get the most burned in a kitchen is your sugar, but your second biggest burn is oil. Oil burns are no joke either because they also act kind of like napalm. You want to be careful with oil. And I treat oil really carefully. Like I'll move this, like even in a little kitchen setting like this, I'll move my oil. Then I'm, I won't move the whole thing together. I'll move this separately. Because when you have a face like this, you need to protect it. You know what I mean? Then I put my oil, and then I move it away. Okay, sitting on the wire, she says. Okay, there it is. When I'm giving a speech about oil safety, you know, damn straight, that's when I'm going to get really burnt. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. Now, we are going to set up our mix for this, which is real simple. It's, oh, you could see this is starting to really reduce. It's got getting sticky now. You see how it's like a little sticky in the pan? Cook it down a little bit more, and then it's going to be done. You don't, you don't want it to be totally liquid, not liquid, but you also don't want it to be, you want it to cook down a little bit more. Okay, so eggs. How many eggs does it call for? Two? One or two eggs? I think it calls for one egg, but if you have two eggs, put in two. Dog knows eggs. He smells them. He sees them. So he might start barking. He doesn't know what's going on with. He loves eggs. Okay. <coughs> beep beep beep. Okay. So this is your eggs you're beating. Into this is going to go your milk. Um, we're calling for um, quarter cup milk to one egg, so I would increase it slightly. Okay, also to go back to my uh, thing here on the stove, now I'm gonna put in my vanilla extract and I'm gonna just shut it off. Put in my vanilla extract, shut it off. It's done. It'll carry over for a minute or two. I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, my milk, my milk is gonna go in here. A little milk. Good. Okay, so milk is mixed with the egg. Simple as that. Okay. Um, sugary compote is done. Drink is uh, taking effect. And the only thing left to do is to dip and garnish. Okay, now before we dip, it's almost ready. We're gonna make a little cinnamon sugar, which is essentially take your granulated sugar, okay? And you're gonna mix in some cinnamon. And you decide how cinnamony you like it. I, I just wanna touch. Cinnamon goes a long way. And you know what, like, we could, we could do a whole class on, like, cool Christmas gifts. I mean, you could make some cinnamon sugar in one of these little ball jars. You cover it up, you put on a bow, and you have cinnamon sugar as a gift with a cute label and uh, 
you're Martha Stewart. You know what I mean? It's easy. I pay for that class. See, there you go. That'd be a cool class, right? We should do that. <laughs> Come December, I think we could do like gifts for under a buck in the kitchen. We could make some cool stuff. Maybe we'll start in September with like like lemon cello, for example. That takes a while, but you give somebody some lemon cello, even a small jar, that's an item that sells for like 40 bucks in the store, but it's a really nice gift to give. We could make sugar, all different kind of cool sugars, cinnamon sugar, lemon sugar, vanilla sugar, I could go on forever. Okay, so anyway, here's your cinnamon sugar that's made. Okay, and here's your items, your carozza. I'm gonna dip it right in here, about 60 seconds, 20 seconds there, 30 seconds. Let it absorb, kind of like a piece of French toast. Right off, now careful when you put it into your oil. But there it goes. Same thing now on my big one. You'll want a golden brown. Let it drip off. Number two. Now, it's going to fry on one side probably about 60 seconds till it's brown. And then on the other side, we're going to flip it over. Give it another 60 seconds. And when you pull it out, on your receiving area, little little paper towel, Okay, and it's going to start souffleing. It's going to actually start to float a little bit, which is exactly what you want. There's your little mozzarella and carrot, so that's going to wait for a minute. Okay, I'm going to look. I'm going to peek. I'm going to give it another couple of seconds on that side. Yeah, see that's a good color brown. Flip it over. Looks like a hot pocket. Yep. Okay. So now get ready, get set, go, because we're going to be able to really garnish it nicely. Now my mozzarella and carrots, like I said, same thing, but I don't want to mix savory and sweet. For those two boys are about to be removed. So I can put them in there. Watch out, Cooper. Now, Pam's getting ready. Okay, you really want it brown on both sides. So the second side might take a minute or two. And there it goes. Now, the minute it comes out, we're going to put it onto our receiving area, a little towel maybe. Um, and then, then what's important is get your sugar ready because you want to sprinkle it on top quickly. Now, what else could you put on top of this? Well, I'm going to put on cinnamon sugar, but here's a couple of other cool things that I could put on. I don't know if they do this in the parks, but coconut flakes, sweet and coconut flakes right on top of this would be delicious. Um, this is confectioner's sugar. You could use that as well if you don't want to use the cinnamon sugar. Um, you could certainly put on some sliced almonds, which I have. Those would be nice right on top. Give a little texture, a little extra color. So, uh, like that. Let's see what this looks like on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Look, I would like to say, you know, things are perfect. But, you know. So the the one the, where I'm crunching the two pieces of bread together, it's going a little faster. So I just took it out. I'll show you what that looks like. Looks like a little hot pocket. See? Now, the minute I took it out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle the sugar right on top of it because it's going gonna, it's gonna to absorb into it a little bit. Okay. Let's look at the other one. Yeah, that's looking nice. This is the Tonga Toast looking from the park with the stuffed bread. You see that one? How nice that looks? That's going to come out. And that is going to also get sprinkled 
with my cinnamon sugar right on top. And my mozzarella and carrozza, if I had some tomato sauce or pesto, I'll show you what that will look like in a minute. And this is that. So now the question you have to ask yourself is, you might want to make it a little bit darker because if it's a little darker, it'll constantly, oh, that looks nice, 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 very nice. Cool, cool, good. So what you're gonna see is, you know, how much saturation, how much bread saturation, and how deep in the bread is it gonna go? But the truth is, you make one, you see, gee, if I made it for another two minutes, maybe it would look a little, it would be a little more melty on the inside. That's up to you. Now with the mozzarella and carrozza, that matters a lot more, but it doesn't matter as much with um, the tonga toast. Okay, so I'm gonna move this oil over now and show you. Show you, show you. Give me one moment. Don't put anything, okay, no water in there, okay. So, you ever hear that expression, oil and water don't mix? Well, it's true. Don't ever throw water into oil. You'll learn the valuable lesson that you're going to get really hurt. Okay, so I'm going to plate one of these so we can see what it looks the way I would plate this. Um, bite was, you know, I know it's different in the parks. Everybody has different ways to do it, but I'll just show you a little restaurant plating just for uh, giggles, okay? So I'll take my piece, tongue of toast, put it in the middle of my plate. Then I will take a little of my uh, compote, get some chunks of compote right in the middle. Now my, again, you know, in the park, this might be a walk around item. But it's a restaurant item? Oh, okay, it is a restaurant item. Okay, cool. So this would be a nice sort of plate right there in the middle. And then I would take a little more of my cinnamon sugar, sprinkle it on the top. Then I would take some of my fruit that I have in the middle. I have my bananas. Okay, I'll take some bananas. I put some bananas right on top, all over the plate. Nice. And then my last step would be my strawberry. Here's a... Here's a little trick with a strawberry. You keep the thing on the top and you slice it as close together as you can. I'm just slicing vertically down the strawberry. And then that will fan, see? You make like a little fan. You can put a fan on top, okay? And then Pam is saying I should put on some bacon. So who's used to argue with bacon. Bacon's always a winner, right? So put on a couple of pieces of bacon. And I would personally put on some, some of these nuts because I like, I would really would like the uh, density of the nut and everything like that. Matches my personality. And, um, oh, I like the way confectioner sugar looks. So I'm gonna put on a little confectioner sugar and if I'm really getting really saucy, I could put on some of my coconut flakes. And we just took a 10 cent piece of toast and made a $17 dish. Tonga toast. Ta da. Nice. Good. Good enough to eat. Let's see, Dave. Nice. Cool. Excellent. Josh, careful when you hold it up to the camera. <clears throat> He's still working on it. That's good. Um, that's fine, but yeah, that's a nice looking plate, honestly. Okay, so, and there, there you have it. Um, I like this other one too, because this looks like, this is cool looking, this mozzarella, the one where I mushed the two pieces of bread together. Uh, I think I might even like that more, because it's a little thinner. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you got a winner. Yeah, yeah, I think I would make it like, like it even a little bit more. So that's cool. And this is my mozzarella and carrozza. See, that just has a little mozzarella in it. And I would serve this with a little tomato sauce 
and maybe some basil leaves if I had, and then, and then you have like mozzarella and carrots. Any questions? Dave, Kim likes your shirt. Nice, Joshua, with a, with a helpful finger. I like that, Josh. That's good. Okay, cool. All right. Any uh, cool? It look, tastes pretty nice. Very nice. Good. Josh is getting his oh, own with the juice. Nice, nice. Okay. Any questions about any of this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Looks looks very good. Um, so yeah, this was fun. This was fun. So I like the fact that you know you can make great food simple. It doesn't have to be like like the bread service at Tana, which uh, like it was like teaching like ten chefs. You know, this was much easier and but fun, and you get a cool result. So um, there it is. So next week, short rib wontons and squash soup. Let's make those. That's gonna be. Hey, there's one of my favorite little cooks. How you doing, sweetie? Hi. <laughs> Um, oh, there's another one. Hey, cutie. Oh, there's all, we've got a whole crew. So, oh, there it is, a whole crew. Nice. Okay, well, there it is. Um, anything to add, Josh, or are we uh, good? Hey, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody for, for being here tonight. Um, thank you, Adam, for showing us how to make this. It is phenomenal. It seems that everybody here at our place is chowing down at the moment while I'm still cooking, so they seem to be really enjoying <laughs> it. Make so, them clean, uh, Josh. Yes, absolutely. So thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, next week is going to be our last one for a little while. We're going to take a little break and then come back and, and have some other stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, awesome. Thank you so much again. Such a great time. Yeah, we Thank you, Adam it. and uh, Josh. Woo! <laughs> and, guys, we're trying to make this um, as, as good as possible. So if anyone has any suggestions, um, I'm willing to listen. So uh, you could write me an email and tell me uh, – I don't need to hear how great I am. I know how great I am, but I want to hear how, how not great I am so we can make it better, okay? All right, guys. Happy Saturday. Peace out, and uh, we'll see you all soon, okay?